Hello, everyone. I'm Richard Roberts, and welcome to Expect a Miracle podcast. So glad you're joining me today. Once again, a very outstanding guest, a longtime friend, Pastor Curtis Stennis of Salvation and Deliverance Ministries International in Chicago, Illinois, is with me today. Pastor Curtis, God bless you, and welcome to the podcast. God bless you, Richard. It is an honor, a privilege, as well as a pleasure to be with you on this podcast. <laughs> and always great to have fellowship with you. When we get together, it's always wonderful. So I know Holy Spirit is going to do some marvelous things on this podcast. Well, I'm glad for that. Thank you for that good word and special greetings to your dear wife, Linda, and your family. Uh, the times that I have been with you all in Chicago, and I've been with you a number of times, have been tremendous, not only uh, at the church, but also in the in the ministers a group that you head up. We'll be talking about that as well as the banquets we've had and, and, and the private dinners we've had and, and all the wonderful time and even some of the traveling we've done together. So I thank, I thank God for that. Tell me, uh, tell me, Pastor Curtis, exactly how did you get started? Because you, you didn't grow up dreaming of being a pastor. I know that. No, I didn't. I didn't, um, I didn't have aspirations to be in ministry at all, actually. Um, in high school and college, I just wanted to be a successful uh, businessman. That was r really my goal. But uh, I had no idea that meeting a cute little girl in high school would bring salvation, not just to me, but to my entire family. Oh, really? And so, yes, we now, graduated part, from. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. We graduated from the same high school. I met her in my sophomore year in the English class, and she just happened to be a nice young lady. And uh, when we graduated from high school, we went to separate universities here in the Chicagoland area, but we kept in touch. and. Uh, Wound up getting married, but before we got married, um, she told me about Jesus, mm -hmm. and I didn't know much about Jesus, but she led me to the Lord. She said she had just come back and, and had been reclaimed from uh, relationship with the Lord years before. Mm -hmm. So the long and the short of the story is I came to know Jesus through her, and my entire family has had an experience with the Lord, all because of one little lady. Well, thank God for Linda and for her precious ministry, not only to the world and the greater Chicago area, but also to you and to your family. <laughs> absolutely, now, absolutely. Now, how did that experience of, of marrying Linda and uh, being a, a dream, having a dream in, in business turn into a ministry that's now reaching the Chicagoland area as well as nations around the earth and the 100 churches that you oversee and all of that? How did that get started? Well, we, uh, we were just happy being uh, members in a local church in Chicago, and, and we were just happy serving the Lord there. But the Lord spoke to us and, uh, and, and called us to ministry, and we did some training in the Chicagoland area. And not long after that, the Lord spoke to us to pioneer and start a church, and he told us to call it salvation and deliverance because the people need salvation and they need deliverance. And that is how the ministry started. And uh, currently now we've been pastoring 38 years this year of ministry and uh, 45 years of marriage and seven beautiful children. And you know them all. 45 years. And you, of course, you got married when you were five. So you're just about 50 <laughs> years old. <laughs> very, very young. I didn't know a whole lot about life at the time, but I knew I needed to be married to this beautiful young lady that, that just uh, did some great things in life. And, and together, we pioneered this ministry, and uh, we're really enjoying the work of the Lord together. Now, are you still in two locations? We, we actually are not currently now. Okay. But Lin, Lindsay's been to the Chicago location yes. and ministered. And you've been to and the been West to the, Suburban. Yes. 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 So you're you've in one, you're in one location center. now. Right. We're, we're concentrating now on the western uh, suburbs of Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. We actually sold the facility uh, and the, in, in Chicago. Yes, we sold it. We'd been there many, many years. But uh, Lindsay came there and you've done, I don't know, three, four, five different meetings for us in the, in the, uh, in the suburbs. And all of those have been tremendous. Curtis, the Lord also has led you into a ministry fellowship, which spans countries all over the world. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, yes. Uh, we began that uh, ministry as an outreach from the main church many, many years ago. 
um, in helping. It began with helping a ministry in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And from that, we just really prayed and sought the Lord to inquire if it should be a full fellowship. And from that one venture, um, it enabled us to really connect with others and establish the In Covenant Ministries Fellowship. And we've had a good role model in watching your outreach mission, uh, missions around the world. And so we've kind of used it as a model and a guide. Well, you've also been a mentor in the business sense because you've had me uh, in Chicago uh, at, at fellowship meetings and, and other meetings where you are imparting into the lives of business people. And that has also been an important part of your ministry, hasn't it? It certainly has. You know, I'd like to uh, go back to 2005 when you came in and and uh, laid hands on me and Linda. And, I remember uh, that day. And we were able to get all of the uh, in covenant pastors there, as well as other pastors just from around Chicagoland. And we had a great, great time. And and you laid hands and imparted on all those uh, that were in ministry that were there, as well as those that are not in ministry. Pastor Curtis, uh, as you know, Chicago is in the news every day with what's with what's happening uh, within the inner cities of, of Chicago. You were born and raised in that area. I would be derelict if I didn't give you an opportunity to, to say from the from the God standpoint, uh, what what is your perspective and 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 how should we as people who do not live in the Chicago area how should we pray how because we do, when we read in the media we don't know exactly what to believe and what not to believe well you know chicago uh and the metropolitan area is a one i'd like to call it a, a big a melting pot of eth ethnicities and so we have different situations that occur all the time uh First and foremost, prayer is needed. Uh, we, we, need, we need prayer. We need unity. We need peace. And, and, and we really need people to be aware uh, of thy fellow neighbor because we, we just really need a camaraderie from neighbor to neighbor and from neighbor to the upper echelon of local government. We, you know, we really need unity with with, with the people that live in these metropolitan areas and in the city with politicians, you know, with the uh, police force. And, and I think uh, all of the groups that are involved in, in doing that are doing a wonderful job. And, and we just need to continue that good work and that outreach, of course, of, of spirituality uh, will bring things together in unity as well. I was uh, being interviewed recently and someone asked me, uh, concerning this and other issues like this. And I said, Jesus gave us the answer. He said that we are to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And I said to this reporter, I, I, I said, if we do that, we'll handle any racial issue. We'll handle any racial tension. If we'll love our neighbor the same way that we love ourselves. It's not that we can't love ourselves. We're just to love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves. If we do that, Pastor, if we do that, we'll handle these types of problems and we'll have the unity and we'll come together in the way you're talking about. Absolutely. And if we do that across the U.S., we'll see a change across the U.S. In the metropolitan cities, uh, you know, in the suburbs, uh, everywhere in every city, in every locale, we'll see change if, if we can get that accomplished. Now, tell me a little bit about what's going on in Linda's life. Uh, if, if I don't talk to you about Linda, when I get home, my Lindsay is going to give me a, a piece of her mind if I don't talk about, about Linda on this uh, podcast. <laughs> well, she's doing well. She really is. She's doing well. Uh, during this time, we've been working with one of our uh, uh, grandsons uh, with his Zoom work uh, since he hasn't been able to get back into uh, into the building for school. And of course, she's still doing uh, her, her real estate business as well. So a lot of that's, you know, real estate's really booming along through here. And so we've been uh, yet accomplishing that as well. And she's also doing a new thing that's called the School of the Prophet. And she's been doing a lot of uh, teaching with that uh, on Zoom uh, seminars and webinars. And it's been really going quite well. Now, what about your books? You've written a, a number of books, as so is so is Linda. Uh, what's the what's the latest book that you've written? Tell me a little bit about that. The very first book 
I'm, I, I still thank you for endorsing that first book, but God, you promise. It was many, many years ago, but I really appreciate your endorsement of that book. And that book was more uh, about our life and, and ministry at that time. Uh, but I recently wrote a book uh, at the beginning of the year that's called, uh, it, it's actually about Jonah and Jonah's dilemma, because many people don't understand all that took place with Jonah. We just think it's a cute story of Jonah in the belly of a fish, but it also has some uh, repercussions of what happens when we don't obey God versus when we obey God, and to see the grace of God, not just upon Jonah, but an entire city, an entire city. And certainly we need that today. Uh, so so we're, we're now at, I think, about nine or 10 books and still moving, but also we help others accomplish uh, their writing dreams as well. Now, give the people your website and how they can get a, get copies of these books. Absolutely. Uh, all of them are available for those who are pretty savvy with Amazon.com. You can go to Amazon.com and you can order them. That's wonderful. This, this idea of God you promised uh, is something that I'm dealing with right now, Curtis. I've been reminding God you promised this and you promised that. You said you're going to do this. <laughs> so, yes, yes. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people say, well, now I've had a word from God. And God, you promised. When are you going to come through? How do you how do you talk to a person? Because I'm, I'm going to have you talk to me for a minute now. Because I'm saying that very thing. God, you promised. In fact, I said it in the car coming over to the office today for this podcast. I was reminding God, God, you promised you'd do such and such, and it hadn't happened yet. So talk to me and talk to somebody else who's saying the same thing. Well, you know, God has made us some amazing promises. We all have promises that have been spoken to us, and then. You know, they've been spoken directly to us by God. And then we have all of the promises that are in his written word. And, you know, some people say, well, you don't have to remind God of what he spoke. Uh, but we do have to consider that God hears our desperate need and our desperate cry. And sometimes we, we actually say, when God and yes. why God? I've been saying so, that. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely. So what we do is we take hold of that promise and we speak that promise into the atmosphere. We speak it by faith and we know that it has a set time to be accomplished. Sometimes the waiting seems long, but we remind God of what he spoke actually to us. And, and we say, Father, I thank you that my time is now. I know that you're going to do it. I count it done. And then I get an anticipation with a great spirit of expectation that is going to happen in my now season. That's a good word, uh, Curtis. That's a very good word because uh, I'm, I'm believing God. And you know what? I really don't want God to be early and I don't want him to be late. Absolutely. I want it to be at the right time. <laughs> at the right time. <laughs> at the right season. At the right. And we, you know, here's, a, here's another thing that, that I often say. I am the one, I am the one that those promises were spoken to, Father. So I know that you know I am the one and you know what I need for this time. And I believe that this time is now to match with that promise in my life, in my family, in my ministry, and in my business. And I have great expectations that it's going to happen now. I think when we do that, that's when the peace of God comes in peace of God that passes all understanding and a knowing comes into us that God is going to do this. He has not changed his mind. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he said will happen. Yes. And he has not forgotten us. We are not forgotten. Absolutely not. He has also not forgotten our labor of love. He knows what we're doing. We, we have a tendency as human beings want to remind him of all the things that we've done for him. I know I was doing that this morning in the car. <laughs> I said this morning to God, God, remember when I did this for you? And he says, yes, you remember what I've done for you. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yes. Pastor yes. Curtis, there are those who are watching and listening right now who are in desperate need of prayer. Now, you said earlier that you, God gave me the name Salvation and Deliverance because people need salvation and they need deliverance and they're desperate for it. Yes. So right now in this moment, would you pray for someone who's in, in, a, in a position they wish they weren't in? Would yes. you pray over that and then let me also pray as well? 
Father, I thank you for those who will listen to us talking in this podcast and will also confess your promises again over their lives, looking at their situation and circumstance and feeling that there's no way out and no turnaround. Father, I just speak over them now that your word shall come to pass in their lives, that every need shall be met that according to your word and according to their faith, that it shall come to pass now. I bind and I rebuke every spirit that is hindering and every spirit of delay. And I thank you that their salvation is nigh, their deliverance is nigh, their breakthrough has come in Jesus' name. Now, I add my prayers to Pastor Curtis's prayers, and I remind you, my friend, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is in the present. He is in the now, as my dad would say if he were here, in the now of your life. And he has not forgotten you. He knows who you are. He knows where you live, and he knows what's going on in your life right now. And I set my faith with you for the miraculous power of God to engulf you and to overwhelm you and to overtake you. I rebuke every satanic attack of the devil, and I pray right now for you in every area of your life, spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, in your family, in your business, in your job, in your ministry, in every area of your life from the crown of your head even unto the soles of your feet. And I set my faith with Pastor Curtis for you. I agree with his prayer. I know him. I know he agrees with my prayer. And we have come into a holy agreement. Now, when you join us, when you join us in the faith agreement we're making, the Bible says that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Pastor Curtis is one, I'm one, and you're one. That makes three. And so I set my faith with you in Jesus' name for it to be done. I call it done. In the yes. name of Jesus. Thank amen you, Father. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I felt that prayer, Pastor Curtis. I felt your oh, prayer and yes. I felt mine. Yes, it shall be done. It shall be done for those <laughs> who are listening. Well, you know, I've had some great times in Chicago in my life, and I'm looking forward to coming back one of these days and being there with you again. Please share a greeting with lovely Lindsay for us and, and your beautiful daughters. Uh, We love you guys so much, and we look forward to your return to Chicago, because when you come to Chicago, great things always manifest. Praise God. God bless you, and thank you for joining me today on Expect a Miracle with Richard Roberts. I'll see you next week with another outstanding guest. God bless you, and I expect him to do it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Expect a Miracle. We hope you will share it with your friends, and we want to give you a free resource this week to help you focus on the positive. Download your free copy of 10 Positive Declarations today at oralroberts.com slash bookstore. Start declaring who God says you are today and expect a miracle.